How's it going folks and welcome back. It's episode number 65 of Park 2 Primera. Yesterday we had a transfer special. If you didn't see it, I can't encourage you enough to go check it out. It was an eventful one, over 100 million pounds spent. And uh, well, we've, we've done more in the transfer business since you were last here. So in terms of ins and outs since the transfer special, a couple of players going out on loan just as part of shedding the squad size down. Miguel Salgado has departed us on loan to Lorient. Uh, my hope is that he can play some regular football over in France, get his value up. If he comes back and he's developed, great. We've got a backup centre-back. If he doesn't, Maybe we can sell him on for a little bit of money. And elsewhere, Jao Resende has also departed on loan. Was having difficulty selling him in the market. Of course, last year he only played a handful of games anyway. With the overhaul we've had to our strike force, um, he's just not really in with a sniff of any kind of first-team football. So I'm hoping that we can loan him out to Celta. He plays regular football in the Liga, similar to Salgado. If he develops, great. If he doesn't, we can sell him on for some money. But despite those being the only two transfer dealings actually shown here... There's one more player who's left us. I know what you're wondering, Jack. You've sold Atakovic. Yeah, yeah, I have. He's also got injured since we sold him and is out for a couple of weeks, but that's beyond the point. We've sold him to Wolfsburg, who also signed LaRue from us six months ago. I thought that was a good deal. This might be better. We bought Atakovic for 15 million. I'd made my peace with the world that I was going to make a loss on him. But no, Wolfsburg have come in. £21 million pounds for him. I don't know what they're smoking over there. But I've made profit. I've done it. I've completed football manager. Atakovic leaves us. He was in the B team. And so he doesn't show up in the first team transfers, which is a little bit of an odd oversight of how football ma manager handles things. And as a result... We've got £26 million still to spend, which I'm yet to do anything with yet. I say that, technically not true. We've actually spent just shy of a million pounds on Oliver, who I think we can all agree looks really, really good. Now I want you to look into the top left. He's 15. He's 15 and he's this good already. He is going to slot straight into the B team, hopefully play regular first team football for them. I think we've got a bargain. I feel a little bit bad for Real Oviedo that we were able to get him so cheap. But yeah, absolutely phenomenal talent. Came through their intake last year and immediately played in their first team in La Liga 2 where, to be honest, he was playing really, really well. So delighted to get him signed. Think he could have a really, really bright future. Insane current ability. Hopefully some good potential to boot. At the very least, we're going to make money on him down the line. And the only other player to join us since you were last here is Chen, who, of course, we agreed to sign last year. He is part Argentinian, part Chinese. He was playing over in uh, Argentina last year. Played a handful of appearances. For us this year, he's going to slot straight into the B team. Good attacking talent. And I have to say it, our B team is looking very, very stacked. Of course, they were promoted last year. And you can see now playing in the third tier of Spain, just one promotion away from the Liga Smart Bank, which is the division directly below us they're top of the league after two games 10 goals scored and the season preview has them nailed on for promotion so no pressure but Racing B but I am expecting you to get promoted this year and unsurprisingly they dominate the media best 11 um yeah the future's looking bright now, of course, I am working on the assumption that you saw yesterday's episode, but we have got some new players in the team, and some of them are going to feature in today's match against Barcelona. Uh, and a few of them have already featured in our first game of the season, which was against Celta. Now, the reason I didn't do the Celta game was kind of simple. We've got Barcelona today, it's at home, and it's in our brand new stadium, which is really, really cool stuff. But in the game against Celta, we scraped a win. Yeah, this was not the most convincing result against Celta Vigo, but we won 2-1 in the end. We actually took the lead through this. Awful mistake. Luzzi scored it. Great to see the young striker, of course, sign from her for Berlin, open up his account for the club. You can see they did peg us back, though, via Perez back post volley, and it took until the 89th minute as Maya stood up to take it, and he hammered it home. The Croatian set-piece specialist came on off the bench, scored on his debut, looked really, really impressive when we played him, uh, yeah, one of a few players, of course, who were new who scored in that game. Of course, the other man who scored in that game was Luzzi. Really, really great performance from the 23-year-old. Still a relatively young player in the grand scheme of things. Didn't really acknowledge it previously, but four caps and two goals for Spain. A little bit of international pedigree about him. You can see he is a really well-rounded and, well, talented forward. And I'm glad that we've signed him because you may have already spotted it, but Siapina is actually injured to start the season. Out with a back strain, 
out for up to another 12 days, which would be a bit of a pain. Means he's missed the opening game of the season. And of course, he's not here for today's Barcelona game. So there's certainly some pressure on Fabian today. Now, I already mentioned the new stadium, but you can see we've got a placeholder picture here. I think I'm going to get in a new kind of fictitious stadium picture that I'll make sooner rather than later. But if we just have a look at the stadium overview, you can see here capacity 30,000 seats, expansion capacity up to 46,000. So this is looking like a long-term home for us here um, at the new Racing Stadium. Not the most inspiring of names, but we'll go with it. And uh, yeah, it's good to have a new home. Our old stadium was a little bit tired, a little bit dated. And uh, one really, really cool thing of note is that in terms of season ticket holders, we actually have 24,000 there or thereabouts. Last year, in our old stadium, we could only have 23,000 people turn up to a game. So we've sold more season tickets than our previous stadium's capacity. Leads me to believe that there'll be some expansion on the horizon. So going into the new season, what are my hopes, dreams and aspirations? Well, I'd like to go in with a title fight. I would like to push Real Madrid and Barcelona to the very edge. Who knows, maybe Atleti will be the super standout team this year. Of course, it's going to be tough. The media have us down as predicted to finish fourth. Uh, and you may have spotted it, but Pablo Torre remains in the media dream 11 for now. We talked about that last time. We also talked about uh, Heesinkvelt. Heesinkvelt? Look, he's gonna, I need to learn how to say this man's name. I'm going to be saying it a lot. Signed for Real Madrid. He's now the best player in the league. He's 21. He's one of those players that you kind of just see playing against you and sigh. And uh, yeah, he's the key player for Real Madrid who didn't take too nicely, shall we say, to missing out on the title on head-to-head -head against Barcelona last year. With regards to board expectations for the season, you can see them here in terms of club culture. Nothing's changed from last year. Counter-attacking football, defensively solid football, make the most of set pieces. Confident that we can do all of that stuff. And in terms of this year's expectations, they want us to reach the Champions League knockout round. I'd like us to go a little bit further than that. I talked about it last time. But quarterfinals every year from now on is my dream. Uh, in terms of league performance, they want a top four finish. And while the long-term vision for the club is just to consistently finish top four, which I'm hoping we can push a little bit beyond that, get into a title race, win La Liga. I am becoming aware of the fact that Football Manager 2022 isn't a million miles away. We need to get into gear. And I always feel like it's interesting to have a little look at the transfer happiness. What do the, what do the board think? What do the fans think of our signings? Well, all in all, they're pretty bloody happy with everyone we've signed. The player who the board and the fans are most excited about is Esteban Flores, who, of course, is the Argentine kind of model citizen we signed last year at centre mid. Little bit of a confession. He's currently playing in the B team. But who knows, over the course of the season, he might find himself back in first team contention. I have registered him for the league, so we can call him back if we need to. I think there are some weird B team rules around recalling players, which I should probably read into. Uh, that's tomorrow's problem. Today's problem... Barcelona at home and getting a win against them. And this is the team that we're going to go with for today's first live com of the season. Rambadani is in goal now. I declined a £60 million bid from Juventus for Rambadani. Was I mad to do it? Potentially, considering the bid came in since the Celta Vigo game. I just wasn't willing to risk nuking my defence, selling a goalkeeper to sign a new one after the season's already begun. Feels like a little bit of a needless risk. Of course, Ramadani won goalkeeper of the year last year. I'm hoping he's going to live up to those standards that he set going into this season. The rest of the team, we've got Perez at left back and Corridor coming back in at right back. A fan favourite, I feel like. Going to be interesting to see how he performs for us there this year. Of course, big boots to fill as Zivkovic departed for Arsenal. In the centre of the defence, we've got Galaretta, who holds down his spot alongside the new record signing in Josko Vardiol. Very, very high expectations on this man. A tremendous defender, 25 years old. He's got his prime ahead of him. I've signed him, and I'm hoping that he is going to be a little difference maker for us this year. In midfield, it's going to be the midfield duo that finished last season. It's Kapanu in at the ball-winning midfielder position, alongside Sandro Tonali at box-to-box -box midfielder. And into the final third, we don't have Siapina, we don't have Avramides, so some changes needed here. Pablo Torre, of course, playing down the middle. To his right, Pedro Porro, who was our first signing of the summer for £34.5 million. Didn't have the best of debuts last time out. Hopefully, he's going to have a better game today. Over on the left-hand side, we've got Gok Deniz, uh, the Turkish 
kind of inside forward slash striker slash all round good guy. Uh, he is hopefully going to get that goal scoring record up. He didn't score on his debut. And I feel like because of how well he's played for Juve and Leipzig, my expectations were unreasonably high. Maybe he can turn up today and show us what he's all about. And of course, up front, we've got Fabian Luzzi, was a big transfer, scored on his debut. Need more goals from him today. I suppose we should also acknowledge the bench. We've got Nianzu, Leandro Perez, Taliso, Vega, Maya, Jonathan Martinez and Calderon on the bench. Um, with the Avramides and Ciapina injuries, we're kind of lacking a natural striker on the bench, although technically Calderon can play there. Uh, we'll, we'll have to see how we get on. I thought that we'd signed a load of depth in the final third, but with a few injuries, we're already lacking the impact subs that I've demanded uh, the impact subs that I demanded, they're starting today. Let's see if they can have an impact from the off. We are going with our 4 2 3 1. As for Barcelona, I actually don't know how they're going to line up for this year. Let's take a peek. They're going with their 4 3 3. De Bruyne in the midfield. Stoyanshu. I mean, it's quite a good team, isn't it? It is, it is quite a good team. And uh, if you're wondering, they also won their opening game of the year. So it's going to be a battle. Oh, I'm excited for this season. It's been a a kind of busy preseason, way more busy than I expected it to be, a fair bit in the way of turnover of players. I'd love to know now as we go into the season, what do you make of my transfer business? Like, pause the video, go in the comments, one word review if you're struggling to construct sentences. I think it's been an exciting transfer window. I feel like we've bolstered up the team, we've bulked up a little bit, and I'm hoping that despite Ciapina and Avramides being missing, we can really put up a fight today. This is the kind of game that last season we would have really struggled in without those two players, where I, I kind of look at the team now and think, yeah, you know what? We can actually give them a fight. And well, it's going to be Gok Deniz threaded through by Luzzi, and the two replacements for the two men I've just talked about link up and get us the opening goal in this game, which is absolutely great to see. I kind of threw both of them under the bus. I, I mean, more so Gok Deniz. He is, of course, a left-footed inside forward on the right-hand side and striker. Left attacking mid is not his best position by any means, but he's out there today. And that goal on his home debut is hopefully going to be a little bit of a confidence builder. Right, we are going to build from the back here. We've been the better team in this game thus far. Hopefully we can keep things going here. Pablo, over to Sandro Tonali. Options to his right. And the end goes back to Capano, back to Pablo. Lovely build-up play here. Luzzi holding up the ball well. Frederick Gokden is, and he scores another, and it's almost an identical goal to the previous one. The finish was slightly different at the end of it, but into Luzzi's feet, he was afforded time to get his head up, look around, assess his options, and, uh, well, in the end, he's picked out a really good pass. Gokden is getting in behind, making that run, using his pace, and the finish at the end of it, cool, calm, and collected, Maybe those goals he got for Juve and Leipzig over four or five years, maybe they weren't a fluke. Although, let's not get carried away yet. We need to do some defending. Barella, out wide to Manella, who's going to play a bat to Barella. Whipped in towards the back post. Bolde is going to keep this alive because they've got Kevin De Bruyne, who led the league in assists last year. But Capanu just rips the ball away from him, says, no, that is mine. You're not having this. Luzzi's hold-up play on that occasion was a tad disappointing. But, well, the ball's going to be lumped forward to us, and we'll look to build from the back again, I imagine. Or maybe maybe we'll just lump it forward to Luzzi. He nods it down to Gok Diniz. They are linking up superbly. Pablo, Pedro Porro hits it, finds the back of the net. It's 3-0. And all the new players have scored. And they've all done stuff. And that feels quite good, doesn't it? There's nothing worse than spending £20 million on a striker and football manager, and they just don't do anything for a number of games. But all three... Of our big new signings, I mean, Gokden is 22.5 million, Luzzi, 22.5 million, Pedro Porro, 34.5 million. We've spent the big bucks on these men. So far, so good. They look like they mean business. And well, Corridor, I guess he's like a new signing this year, really, at right back, isn't he? We'll keep an eye on his performance. Pablo, Corridor's got some space here, Pablo, if you want to pass it to him. In the, in the end, instead goes to Tonali, although Tonali will now find him. Was that a foul in the penalty area? Nothing's been given. There was a, there was a collision. Capanu, oh, that is, that is not cricket, is it? That is not a good ball. Martial is through. Ramadani, can you do Ramadani things? Yes, he can. Of course he can do Ramadani things. His name's Ramadani for crying out loud. And it remains 3-0. Oh, my word. What a save in the one-on-one -on -one there. We needed that. That was huge. And, well... 
at least right now, it looks like we're going to maintain our free goal lead going into the break. Or, or could it be four? Maybe. Maybe. Pedro Porro dispossessed. Okay, they've dealt with it. They've cleared it. That That's the end of the highlight, isn't it? To be honest, I'm not sure we could have hoped for a better half there. We've been by far and away the better team. We were very, very clinical with our chances. And I think there's only one thing to do. Just tell the players that I'm delighted. Give them praise. You know, a few of these players I've not signed to be regular starters. I've signed them knowing they've got the quality to be regular starters. But players like Gokdeniz and Luzzi, they could be playing themselves into first team contention. I don't know if that was a shot or a cross by Gokdeniz there. If it was a shot, I've I've got questions. Oh my word, Martial, Ramadani. I mean, that's not what I meant by Ramadani things. He's come out for the one-on-one -on -one and he's just missed the ball. Hmm. Why did I why did I tell the players I was delighted? Elsewhere, by the way, Elche beating Real Madrid 1-0 as things stand. We love Elche. Come on, Elche, do it for us. Ah, oh, that was an annoying goal to concede. I think Ramadani might need an inquest into that goalkeeping. All in all, been a really impressive performance so far. With 20-odd minutes left, I'm just weighing up whether or not to make a change. But before we make any changes, let's let this play out. Luzzi Tonali, he's offside. Don't celebrate it. Luzzi, again, though, winning the ball in the air. He's looking really, really formidable in those kind of positions. I'm going to make some changes. I'm going to bring in Tolisso at box-to-box -box midfielder. Pablo Torre's not had the best of games, so I'm going to bring in Maya for him. Um, Maya's interesting because he's a pretty decent playmaker all in all, but he's also got the set pieces which is something that obviously Pablo has. And whenever I take off Pablo, I feel like we lose a little bit of set-piece threat. But with Maya, I feel like we can make a change if Pablo isn't performing a little bit like today. And we still have a player more than capable, I suppose, of coming in and taking over those set-piece duties. Barcelona here have looked pretty underwhelming. They've created a couple of one-on-ones, to be fair, but they've just been lumped balls forward to Martial. They've not really dominated from open play, created chance after chance after chance. Truth be told, we've been a little bit subpar in the second half, and while we might still need to do some defending here, as Galaretta goes charging in, and while Martial misses the target, fortunately for us. You can see here, though, they've actually they've actually edged it out when it comes to XG. I guess the Martial goal was a really high XG chance, because there was no goalkeeper in place. Right, a little bit of game management needed here. Kapanu on a booking, don't like that. Let's bring in Nianzu, uh, and also, whilst we're here, just in possession... Just just time waste. Four minutes left. Let's make sure that we see out this result. No nonsense. And as soon as I go to time waste, a highlight begins. Of course a highlight begins, but it's just Guardiola time wasting. I love it. Gokden is. Maya, threaded through, fresh off the bench, scored on his debut from the spot. Very nearly scored from open play there. Good save by Tostegan. I don't know. I'm looking at this performance, and 3-1 looks pretty good. But what I'm even more happy about is the actual kind of individuals performing here. When we sold Zivkovic and Blanco for £100 million, whilst only one of them was a regular starter, they were two players who, you know, they'd have impacts on matches. They would bring their A game. From what we've seen in this game, it looks like we've spent that money that we recouped pretty wisely into a few different spots. And ultimately, we're going to run out here relatively comfortable 3-1 winners. That game... Never really looked in doubt, even if in the second half we took our foot off the pedal just a little bit. And you can see here, Racing Stadium debut sets an attendance record. We set an all-time record of 29,904, which isn't quite a sellout, but it's really, really close. Hopefully that is going to enable us in the future to expand the stadium, although I guess matches don't get much bigger than us taking on Barcelona when you think about it. Gokden is, by the way, I think he got player of the match in this game. Two goals to his name. Looks really, really good in front of goal. I gave him a little pep talk before the game. We talked about this goal scoring record that he has, where he's never really been the regular starter at any club, but he's always been capable of scoring goals at them. And, uh, well, I'll tell you what, he's capable of scoring goals. He's shown us it there. And apparently the entertainment was found at the Racing Stadium. Ourselves, Atleti and Sociedad, the only teams to win all of our opening games elsewhere. Elche... Mustered up a draw against Real Madrid. Fair play to Elche. Give them a round of applause. Elche, you've done us a favour very early on in the season there. So in terms of when we're going to be back next time, the Champions League draw hasn't happened yet. So I have no idea who's in our group. We will await with bated breath. 
who our opposition may be. Um, that may determine who we end up coming back for a game against. Elsewhere, you can see here, we have got Atleti at the start of October. But you know what? It's still early days. I'll figure out when we're going to be back next time. We may have spent some more money between now and then. £26.7 million is going to burn a hole in my pocket. So don't be surprised if there's another signing or two between now and the transfer window closing in a little over a week's time. I will hopefully... I'll see you guys next time. If you have enjoyed today's video, do drop a like on it. Let me know, as I said, what do you make of our transfer business? Some big signings made, of course, between this year and the season previous. I hate the fact that the transfers show over two years like they do. It's really, really bad. Football manager, please fix. They won't fix it before next time, but hopefully you'll be back next time. Um, I'm just rambling on here. I think my transfer business has been, been bloody brilliant. I'll see you guys again tomorrow. Thank you for your support, as always. And other than that, it is me, Jack. And I'll talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.